one of the sayings that I always say is that as long as you're still growing, then you're in a great environment. If you're stagnant and you're not growing, then it's time for you to figure out what's next. That's kind of what they're looking to do. They're looking to coach us to help us improve so that their department, their uh, vertical, whatever they're supporting is going to get better. Uh, And the evaluation is really just how you're being measured against expectations. And we need to be able to distinguish uh, between the the different types of feedback as as it goes and make sure we're on the same side of the table all the way through that conversation. Welcome back to the Career Advancement Academy. I'm Jack. This is Kara. We're your favorite career coaches. And this week's episode is the three steps you need to ace your upcoming performance review. Kara, this is a very interesting topic that we have at this end of the year. Absolutely. It is December and we are helping you prep for the end of the year and moving into 2024. I can't believe it's already there. But we are excited because, listen, according to Gallup, only 14% of employees uh, strongly agree that their performance reviews are inspiring in their work performance, right? And so performance reviews, if you're like us, if you're like most people out there, in fact, 86% of people, they're probably feeling a little bit anxious, feeling a little bit nervous about this performance review. And for most people, it is a turning point on whether or not they want to continue growing in their role. They're looking for that promotion. They're looking for a little bit of a raise or whether or not They're going into a job search in the new year. So we want to make sure that you're prepared for the before, during, and after of your annual performance review probably coming up soon. And let's face it, the performance review isn't just about this one thing. It's like a culmination of all the time you've spent in this year of working on projects and you might potentially have a lot of emotions that kind of pop up Mm -hmm. because of this reflection time. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just a routine meeting, right? It's not just another one-on-one with your boss. It isn't just about, you know, a quick reflection or any of this other stuff. It's a really good opportunity for you to make some decisions, you to advocate for yourself, and it's for you to have this career-defining opportunity. So how do we change just a regular performance review and maximize this opportunity for your career advancement again, before, during, and after. So let's talk about the first step, preparing your mindset for a review. I I think it kind of ties back to the emotions I was just talking about. We need to take some steps and actually give some intentionality so that we can acknowledge the common feelings that we have, right? Because most of us get a little apprehensive when we start thinking of like, oh, oh, I got to go into this and I have to fight for my value and I have to, you know, make sure that I do this. And the problem is, is if we don't really embrace the emotions behind the why we need to do that, then all we're kind of left with is that frustration energy and we're not able to necessarily be as thoughtful, intentional, and creative when kind of engaging in that conversation. Yeah. And most people feel, and it's normal, right? That they're going to be judged, right? Oh crap. Here, here's my opportunity to get judged and get told everything that's wrong. Right. It's there for it, right? Well, no, it kind of is, but let's shift our view, right? Consider this review, not just a one-sided evaluation, but a strategic conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. If we shift our mindset towards that as, hey, I'm not in here just to be judged, but rather it's a two sided conversation to have an actual strategic conversation about past, present and future of my role and how we are, uh, how my role affects the team and the company goals. It can be a completely different conversation. Right. And let's think about it. Right. It your mindset and your demeanor, your whole presence changes. If you go in like this, like, okay, I'm just here, right? And if you're watching this on YouTube, it makes a lot more sense than if you're just watching on podcasts. But if your shoulders are slumped and you're sitting back and your arms are crossed, like, okay, I'm here for my performance review versus shoulders back. Hey, I'm here to have that strategic conversation. I'm here to discuss what went well, where I needed support, where priorities shifted and changed. And most importantly, how my role affected the bottom line of our team and the company's goals, missions, and values, that's two different conversations, right? I think really kind of the theme you were saying there, it's really kind of shifting our viewpoint from a judgment perspective to more of a, 
in evaluation and improvement because mm-hmm. there's that potential there if we do approach it from that type of mindset. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's a performance development session, right? And when you can look at that as an opportunity to, hey, this is me growing. This is me being able to develop. It's more than just, oh, I'm looking back on the year. It's an opportunity to enhance your career, right? So really what we're looking to do is encourage that feedback. Yeah. We want really to receive the feedback because that out outside perspective really might highlight areas where maybe we weren't the best or we could grow in and with that potentially grow our careers and have more opportunity because of that. Right? Yeah. It's also a chance and we don't get a chance to really do this very often, but it's a chance to zoom out. Not very often when you're in the day to day, you're working on projects, you got deadlines, you got customers and you got all this stuff going on. You don't get the chance to really zoom out and see how your role affects. Like I said, the team, your boss's role, the department, your coworkers, other departments, and the company as a whole. How often do you do that in the day to day? Right? Probably not very often. And so, a lot of times, and I remember this because I, in my role in HR, implemented a performance management system and trained all every single person in our company how to use it, how to, all the leaders on how to do goals and all that other stuff. And overwhelmingly, the response from people was, oh, I have too much on my plate. I can't do this right now. It's just another thing I got to cross off my list. And that was honestly really sad for me to to hear because it was something I was so passionate about. And it was an opportunity for people to really zoom out and see how does my piece of the puzzle really affect the big picture. And when those people were able to really approach those conversations with that viewpoint, Well, they had better conversations. They were able to better advocate for themselves. They got better raises because they were able to have that zoomed out perspective instead of just kind of phoning it in. Yeah, I think that's probably where, you know, I probably could have taken some of those heathens in some of my past conversations (laughs) uh, because uh, I think I went into it from the, you know, I got to get what I deserve, right? I, I accomplished these things and and I deserve this. But really what you're saying is, hey, it's a, it's a two-way street. It's it's having that conversation and understanding that the manager can gain insights from you. What gaps do I see in my role? Where do we need to improve as a, as a department? Where can we get better in how we serve our role to the organization, mm-hmm. right? It seems like that's kind of what you're, you're saying is we need to find a way to collaborate here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a two-way street. Let's think about it, right? If you are thinking about your last year, I don't know about you, but I barely remember January. Like I don't even remember where I was in February. And so if you are having a struggle trying to remember all of the things that you've done throughout the year, how can you possibly expect your manager to remember all the things that you've done throughout the year too, right? Most likely your manager is managing multiple people, not just you most likely, right? And so this is an opportunity where your manager can gain insights from you. You have a different perspective on the team. You have a different perspective on the customers than they have too. So your feedback not only can help illuminate your impact uh, in your role and all that other stuff, but your feedback can help shape the department, the team and the company and help even shape leadership to be a more supportive work environment because you're providing feedback as well. So this is a really good two-way street where you get to provide feedback to your manager, your manager gets to provide feedback to you, and you get to help illuminate all of the impact that you've done and remind them of that as well. Yeah, I think I think that's important. But I think now that we've kind of overviewed everything that needs to be done, what would be some recommendations, say I am getting ready for my next performance review, that you would recommend a professional or individual do? Mm-hmm. For- Well, first of all, I would absolutely highly recommend that you check out our YouTube channel tomorrow because I'm going to be dropping a video, a very extensive video on how to prepare your self-evaluation. Most likely you have to do, you will be asked to do a self-evaluation before your annual review with your boss. This is a highly, highly um, important time in your career every year for you to advocate for yourself. So 100% I go over some extensive details and tips for you to check out tomorrow. But I really would 
a couple tips, recommend you take some time and review your kudos folder. If you don't have a kudos folder, start one. This is going to be when people give you feedback, when they give you praise, if you, every uh, accomplishment project, everything that you have done throughout the year, you're throwing it into a folder. It takes 30 seconds to a minute for you to do on the day to day, but it comes in clutch, right? At the very end of the year, when you're like, oh, I don't remember what I did earlier that year, right? So that's going to be the first thing. The second thing is you're going to be asking and preparing specifics on where you would like feedback. Did you have growth opportunities last year that you've been really hard working on? Think about those and ask and notate them so that you can ask for feedback. Think bigger beyond your specific duties, right? Your career aspirations, your work-life balance, your professional growth, your soft skills, your technical skills, where you really been investing your time and ask for feedback on that, right? This is also a really good time for if you have a good relationship and you feel comfortable, ask your manager for their opinion on your career. Where do they see you going in the next year, two years, three years? What opportunities do they see for your growth? Where do they see opportunities for you to get stronger in your strengths and potentially in your in your weaknesses. And lastly, approach the session like a consultant would, right? How can the feedback improve both your performance and the company's success, right? Have them tie that back to company goals, team goals, etc. Because this is going to remove that personal aspect, those feelings from that conversation. And it's not going to be that personal a front that some people feel. And I get it. I am that way too. When I was earlier in my career, that feedback felt like, oh, this isn't doesn't feel like a gift. It sort of feels like a, a whatever the opposite of a gift is. I don't like this, right? But when you're you can ask that, and if you're kind of sensitive that way, which is totally fine, a lot of us are, it's okay to say, hey, here are some goals that I'm looking to work for or work towards. Here's ways that I really want to help the company. Can you provide some feedback on ways that I can improve in my role in order to help the team or the company get to the success marker, right? Um, so those are some tips that you can start when you're looking to prepare before the session. I love that approach because really you're getting on the same side of the table. It's yeah. not taking that adversarial approach. That's really cool. Yeah. So now when we're in our review, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're having that conversation. What is really key to an effective and successful performance review? Honestly, it comes down to those two things. We've already touched on one, which is feedback, right? Feedback being a gift, providing that feedback. And the second is going to be effective communication. So effective communication, what does that mean? It means really clear, effective communications. It's listening as much as speaking and setting that tone. I always like to really try to remove that emotion from the conversation as much as possible. And it's hard because it does feel personal. It's about you, but approaching the conversation with openness, willingness to see this as a productive dialogue, and as much as possible, putting yourself on the same side of the table, right? So what, what does that mean? It's using the terms we, us, you know, those types of things, like what can we do in order for, Um, us to get this role into this sort of position? What can we do in order to accomplish this goal together? Um, This is going to put you on the same side as your manager or you on the same side as your employee in order to create that team environment. Mm -hmm. As soon as you kind of create like, well, you didn't do this or, well, I didn't feel supported when you did that. All of a sudden, you're literally putting yourself on the other side of the table and defenses are going to come up, hackles are going to come up, sensitivities are going to come into place. And it doesn't matter, even if you're saying something personal, it doesn't matter. Like if you did a great job, but, right, it's going to feel like there's something not great coming. Um, and it's it, nothing's going to be heard and receptive uh, in that. So it sounds like you're you're saying we need to really embrace the feedback. We yeah. need to make sure that if there is positive feedback, hey, great. That's awesome. Now let's talk about those next steps and where can we leverage our strengths to really further the organization like you mentioned, mm-hmm. but also constructive criticism when they are telling us something in ways we can improve. Because 
That's kind of what they're looking to do. They're looking to coach us to help us improve so that their department, their uh, vertical, whatever they're supporting is going to get better. Uh, and the evaluation is really just how you're being measured against expectations. And we need to be able to distinguish uh, between the, the different types of feedback as it as it goes and make sure we're on the same side of the table all the way through that conversation. Coach. Absolutely. And if you're a leader, I highly recommend the coaching approach, right? Evaluation is you know, like Jack said, measuring you against that expectation, but leaving it there is, is not as helpful as providing a little bit of additional coaching in addition to that. Right. So you can say, Hey, here's where we were, we were expecting to be. Unfortunately, we didn't meet that. However, here's how we can improve in order to meet that in the future. Right. And so providing that help is great, but just providing that evaluation And then leaving it there, that's not as helpful as it would be providing some additional coaching so that we can learn that feedback and get that improvement, right? Um, And when it comes to responding to, to feedback, be gracious, right? As much as possible. That's going to go a long way. When you thank your reviewer for input and ask some clarifying questions, if you're unsure, that creates a dialogue back and forth, right? You can use I statements in order to convey your perspective without sounding really defensive, right? Such as I appreciate that insight. It helps me understand where I can go, where I can grow, right? Instead of like, well, I don't understand what you are saying here. or You don't make any sense or anything like that. It just says, hey, I appreciate that insight helps me understand where I could grow. And if you disagree, you can frame it kind of positively, right? Well, I understand what you're saying. Thank you so much for for your insight. I see it a bit differently and here's why, right? Mm -hmm. And you can follow it with your perspective. And this is going to really help you out in creating that dialogue. And you're still on the same side of the table right? You're not pointing fingers. You're not telling why people are wrong. And it's creating that healthy communication that adults use of saying, Hey, we can still come to the table and disagree, but here's where I'm going to show, uh, share my perspective so that you guys can come to a, a meeting point. That's interesting. I really love that. Now, so we're on the other side. We were on the same side of the table. We had effective communication. We kind of now have the review So now what? Now we have to figure out a way forward, right? Right. So now that you have your feedback, it's time to build actionable and measurable plans forward. This is what I want you to do after your, your, um, your review is that I want you to figure out what your path forward is, right? One of the sayings that I always say is that as long as you're still growing, then you're in a great environment. If you're stagnant and you're not growing, then it's time for you to figure out what's next. Other uh, things to consider is, are you in a toxic environment? Do you and your manager see things? Do you Are you able to have this communication, this healthy communication? And if these things are all no, then that's other things to take into consideration, right? Are your goals something that you both agreed on, right? Are you able to say, I'm able to see, I see things a bit differently and here's why, and then share your perspective. Is there open listening? And if those things are not necessarily true, I want you to really sit back and evaluate what is your future at this organization? And what does, when you ask that question, where do you see me growing here at this organization? I want you to really listen to what your boss and your manager says too, because if they see a path forward, if you see a path forward, and if you're working on things that you are growing in, you're learning new skills and you're advancing and you love it, great. But if you're not, that's something that you need to take into consideration as well. Why am I telling you this? Well, the first thing is that most likely you and your manager are going to be setting goals for the new year. Those goals should include, of course, things that are within your role, right? Of course, things like um, that are in your job description, growth projects, cross collaboration projects with people on your team, and hopefully projects or um goals that are designed to help you professionally and personally grow so that you're having that experience. And if those are not involved, then I want you to set smart goals so that you are growing in your career, whether that's in your current role or not. Um, We're going to be talking next week about goal setting. So definitely stay tuned so that we can dive a lot deeper into goal setting. I'm not going to waste our time talking about that right now. But that's something that you're going to start thinking about next, especially as you 
you go into the new year is what are the goals that I want to accomplish today or next year in this role? And do they feed my short-term and long-term career growth goals? And if not, where do I need to go to find that? I think that's so important because performance reviews are, can really be a point in career where reflection and projection intersect, right? And yeah. so today we've talked about reframing and viewing the performance reviews from that typical meeting uh, to see a chance to strategize your career growth and to recalibrate professional goals and really to celebrate the successes that you've had over the last calendar year. Yeah. And in our YouTube tomorrow, like Kara mentioned, we're going to discuss how to complete that self-performance review, uh, which very likely you're going to need to pair uh, for that performance review. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned. Check out that video that we're dropping tomorrow uh, where Kara's going to dive into exactly what you need to do there. Mm -hmm. And make sure you stay tuned all month long. We are helping you prepare for the new year. I cannot believe 2024 is right around the corner. So if you're wanting to make the most out of the new year, make sure that you are subscribed to the Optimized Career Solutions YouTube channel. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Career Advancement Academy podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. And hey, leave us a five-star review wherever you listen. They super help us out. They help us help others advance in their career. This month of December, we are talking about advancing your career in the new year. Next week is all about goal setting. The week after that is setting New Year's resolutions. And we're just continuing on and on and on from there. So listen, make sure that you are subscribed, make sure that you're tuned in and have an excellent week. We'll see you next week. Take care.